On this week's show, the regular season is over and the Flames and Lady Flames ended on a high note. We also go inside practice and preview the postseason NCCAA tournaments. All this and much more coming right up. Welcome to Inside Lee University Basketball. I'm Jeff Salyer, and with me is Emily Pitcher. Welcome back, Emily. Are you feeling better after being sick last week? Yeah, Jeff, I feel a whole lot better. The sun is finally out. My body's recovered, so life is good. Good. It's good to have you back on this final show of the regular season for the Flames and Lady Flames, and both the teams remained on the road to close out the regular season. First, they traveled to Carrollton, Georgia, to take on the University of West Georgia, and then later in the week, they made the familiar trip to Rome, Georgia, to face longtime rival Shorter University. The Lady Flames were trying to extend their Gulf South win streak to 14 since losing to Delta State way back on January 9th, but the Wolves were fighting for the sixth seed in the conference tournament. The Lady Flames came out fast and took control of the game, eventually winning by 21 points. Carly Miller led the way with 17 points, with Jenna Adams and Holly German each adding 10 points each. The Flames had the hot hand, shooting 48% from the field and 45% from three-point land. As we've seen in the past several games, the Lady Flames have been hot from the free throw line, but in the game, the Wolves were limited to only five trips the entire game. But as before, they capitalized hitting four of the attempts. Yeah, I can't believe they only made it to the free throw line five times in a game. It's kind of unheard of, especially in this college basketball season where every foul seems to be called uh, early in the year. It really slowed down the game tremendously. As you can see, the Wolves from West Georgia weren't going away, although the Flames had a big control. It gave Coach Rowe a lot of time to play some reserves there. We see Kayla Beavers going to the, slashing to the basket to score to give the Flames a lead. Lee beat West Georgia 73 to 52. Carly Miller had 17 points, Jenna Adams with 10 points, and Sandra Lee with 15 points. After the game, we talked to Coach Marty Rowe about his team's effort on the road. I thought tonight, you know, we took care of the basketball, which, you know, when we're, you know, not turning the basketball over ridiculous and putting too much pressure on our defense, you know, we can, you see that, you know, we can get out and we can really cause some problems. So I thought both ends of court, we did a really good job tonight. We only turned it over five times and, and a couple of those were late. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm really proud of this team to be able to go on the road right now. and and play as well as we did. You know, it's hard this time of year to play that clean. And uh, so we, you know, we've got to continue this and we got one more opportunity to play well in the regular season and then try to get ready for the postseason. So uh, huge win. I'm really proud of, of the effort and looking forward to Saturday now. That win by the Lady Flames set them up to clinch a Gulf South regular season championship in their last conference game versus Shorter. The Flames also battled the Wolves vying to close out the season on a high note preparing for the 2014-2015 campaign. The home team came out hot and put the Flames down by as many as 16 in the first half and 13 at the half at the break. But the young Flames wouldn't go away and fought back cutting the deficit to only one point with six minutes to go in the game. However, West Georgia would go on a run of their own to close out the game and dash the Flames' hopes at a comeback win on the road. Coach Brown called the first 15 minutes of the second half the best they've played all year and the game was very clean. The Flames only committed 11 turnovers and the Wolves committing seven turnovers. The freshman on this Flames team stepped up with Jamal Worthington leading the scoring attack and another freshman, Bryce Copeland, in his first college start, guarded the best player on West Georgia and also contributed offensively. He knocked down some key shots late in the game to try to key the comeback. Both teams shot well, 52% from the field, but it just wasn't quite enough as the Flames were a little short at the end of the game where the Wolves just kind of came back and made a backdoor cut there to seal away the victory. So the Flames lose to West Georgia 76 to 68 in the next to last game of the year. Jamal Worthington with 18 points going eight of 12 from the field and three big rebounds. And Corey Billingsley pouring in 13 points going three of seven from the field and six of six from the free throw line. Denota Stocks 
from West Georgia with 26 points, shooting hot for the night, 9 of 12 from the free throw or from the field, and 3 of 3 from the three-point line. After the game, we talked to Bryce Sharp and Coach Brown about the team's effort in the close loss. Well, Mike, here we are again. I felt like the second half was maybe the best we played uh, all year for 15 minutes, best we've done defensively. Uh, really bad offense, uh, really bad defensively in the first half. Gave up, you know, they shot like 65%, but tremendous effort in the second half. Um, just, uh, you know, Bryce Copeland played good again. Stedman came back from injury. It was good to have him. Taekwon did some good things. Uh, Jamal Worthington did a lot of good and some bad, but um, so really proud of our effort in the second half. And again, something to build on. I hate that we um, didn't get it done in the end, but, uh, you know, we, we showed some heart, some class. And, you know, we played hard every game. But, um, you know, I'm disappointed with the loss. Give credit to West Georgia. They're very talented. Um, I believe just our energy, our mindsets were just, you know, focused in. We realized, man, we just had to stick together, play good team ball. Uh, one of the main things is uh, getting defensive boards, you know, not letting them have second chances, you know. And I believe we did pretty good as well, guarding number one in the second half. Um, but that's that mainly it. He never did tell me we might be alone. How did she always make it look so easy? Sometimes you just need someone to talk to. We offer support groups to help with grieving or just talking and sharing. These support groups are another of our commitments to you. At Jim Rush Funeral Homes, we believe life is worth remembering with compassion and respect. We will continue this tradition that has set us apart for so many years. Jim Rush Funeral Homes, it's all about life. North Okoy and Wildwood Chapels. At Sky Ridge Medical Center, we believe every moment is important. That's why whatever you encounter on the road of life, Sky Ridge Medical Center will be there for you and your family. You can count on our experienced, dedicated staff to provide quality health care and the advanced medical technology you need so you don't miss one special moment. Sky Ridge Medical Center, your hospital for a lifetime. Zaxby's, indescribably good. Practice. Teams have been doing it since October as they prepared for the season and as the season has progressed. Some things have changed in the way teams practice, but as most coaches will tell you, a team will only perform as well as they prepare. This week, Michael Coliander visited both the Flames and Lady Flames during their practice proceeding taking on Shorter University. He captured the sights and sound of preparation in this week's center court feature. DJ, right here. What? We need to stop.
And now it's time for the Gulf South Minute. Let's take a look at the final standings and conference tournament seedings for the Gulf South Conference. First, let's take a look at the ladies standings. At the top is Lee University, receiving votes in the national poll, finishing the season 18-2 in the conference at 22-4. Overall, behind them is number 17, Delta State, at 17-3, 22-4 overall as well. Delta State gets the number one seed in the conference. Remember, Lee, Union, and Shorter are not eligible to play because they're in provisional years of Division II in the process. Delta State's followed by Union at 15-5. West Florida, who gets the two seed at 11-9. Alabama Huntsville and Christian Brothers tied at 10 and 10 get the three and four seed. On the men's side, Delta State again is at the top of the standings there, rated number 22 in the country this week. They get the number one seed overall in the conference tournament. They'll take on West Florida. West Alabama comes in at second at 14 and six overall. North Alabama at 13 and seven. Those are the two and three seeds with Christian Brothers, Alabama Huntsville, West Georgia, Valdosta State following up. I'm Ken Jones, inviting you to visit the all-new SpeakingDeacon.com where you'll find everything you're looking for. Browse over 1,000 vehicles, including 12 new car brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. Apply for financing, get a value for your trade-in, schedule a service appointment, download monthly service coupons, and find the Deacon Jones store nearest you. It's all right here at SpeakingDeacon.com. Speaking Deacon, Speaking Deacon. Are you Speaking Deacon? Fazoli's is the most family-friendly Italian restaurant in town. All the fresh and flavorful meals are served right at your table on real dishes with real silverware instead of foam or plastic. Enjoy a clean, contemporary dining room and the excellent service you would normally expect from an expensive sit-down restaurant. For less than the price of a burger and fries, you can get a delicious hot meal like baked spaghetti, pizza, and all the breadsticks you can eat. It's fast, fresh Italian. It's Fazoli's. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. Welcome back to Inside Lee University Basketball. As quickly as it came, the regular season for college basketball has ended, and the Flames and Lady Flames traveled to an old NAI rival to close out the inaugural season in Division II. For all their accomplishments, this group of Lady Flames seniors hadn't won in Rome, Georgia in the past four years, and they looked to change that. At the same time, they wanted to lock down the regular season Golf South Championship with a win over Coach Vic Mitchell's Hawks. Unlike many of the games the Lady Flames played this year, most of the game was played from behind. Back and forth, each team would make runs on each other. With six minutes to go in the game, the Lady Flames were down 41 to 34, but Holly German hit a three-pointer with 3.13 to go to tie the game 44 to 44. Then Jenna Adams knocked down three to put the ladies up for good, even though Shorter would cut it back down to a one-point lead. But the Lady Flames once again counted on clutch free throw shooting to extend the lead and get a hard fought win. On the night, the Lady Flames 13 of 15 from the free throw line, hitting 10 of 10 in the second half. Led by German with 15 points and Lockhart with 12 points, along with Adams, 10 points and 12 boards were key in the Flames' victory. The win by the Lady Flames also kept coach Vic Mitchell from his 400th career win. You see Jenna Adams here knocking down a three to go ahead. The crowd was into this game the entire time, both Shorter fans and Lee fans, as Lee gets the big win. Lee beat Shorter 53 to 46. Holly German had 15 points, Rachel Lockhart with 12 points, and Kristen Nash 20 points. After the game, we talked to Coach Marty Rowe about the big win over the old rivals. Well, I mean, it's a really, a, it was a huge second half for us. And I, I mean, in, in the, down the stretch, we were really good. And, and our, uh, you know, it's the first time our seniors have won here. You know, I mean, so I'll tell you how tough a place it is to play. You know, throw out records when it's Lee Shorter. I mean, it's just a huge game. And, and with them being senior day, you know, I got to give them a lot of credit. Their seniors played great. You know, 
And, uh, you know, for us to find a way to win, we made some big plays down the stretch, you know, those three, those two threes and then that three-point play that, you know, Holly made, uh, just, just big time plays. They're really good teams do, and we found a way to win again tonight. So, it's a good deal. It's, it feels good to, to, to unofficially win the conference at 18 and 2, and our first year in. So, uh, we're really proud of the team, and they're, they're really excited about what they've accomplished. The Lady Flames will compete in the NCCAA regionals in Jackson, Tennessee, March 14th and 15th, and then move on to the national tournament March 19th through the 22nd at Grace College in Lake Winona, Indiana, as either the at large bid or the region champion. The flame season came to an end at Shorter this past Saturday, and Coach Tommy Brown's squad were trying to secure their first road win against an old rival who they were very familiar with. The flames started slow, but were able to pull away during the first half, taking a 51 to 35 lead into the halftime break. Five flames, five flames turned in double figure scoring led by Taquan Roberts with 22 points. He went eight from nine from the free throw line and grabbed nine rebounds. The most consistent flame, Corey Billingsley, also scored 21 points, hitting three three-pointers. Bryce Sharp in his final game as a flame remained the heart and soul of hustle and leadership that sparked the win for the flames. He finished with 10 points, five rebounds, and four assists. Can't, every time you need a big play, you can count on Bryce Sharp to make the hustle play. Really, the Flames had a command of this game throughout, and Coach Brown's team wanted to end on a high note of the season to set them up into the recruiting season coming up, as well as preparing the young players to get a lot of time. Talked to Coach Brown after the game. He talked about playing a lot of freshmen, a lot of minutes in this final game, and actually in the final two games to prepare them for next year's competition in the Gulf South. There we see Bryce Copeland, one of those freshmen, got his first college start hitting a three to help the Flames win the big game. Flames win 90 to 81 over Shorter and Coach Chad Warner's Hawks. Taquan Roberts with 22 points, going to seven of 14 from the field, eight of 10 from the free throw line with nine rebounds. Corey Billingsley with 21 points, going six of 11 from the field and four rebounds. Jordan Jacks for the losers for the Hawks. Scored 24 points, going 8 of 16, 50% from the field, and 8 of 8 from the free throw line. But he also got 17, that's right, 17 huge rebounds. After the game, Coach Tommy Brown had to get out of the gym to go see his daughter play. And so Coach Ryan Ross gave us some post-game comments about the big win. Yeah, great way to end the season with the first road win of the season and, and to send our seniors out. Bow, Muniru Bawa and Bryce Sharp, who have brought so much to the table, uh, two outstanding human beings that are going to go far in life. To send them out with a win was really important with us tonight. And we talked about how many teams uh, don't get a chance to end their season with a win, you know, before the game. Um, but and, and under these circumstances, maybe not the way we exactly wanted to with not being able to go to the tournament. But still, you know, to end the, end the season with a win and a good taste in our mouth and some momentum to build on the off season. Uh, we had a lot of freshmen play really good minutes for us down the stretch. And we've got a lot to build on for the next year. And I'm extremely proud of the guys. And uh, I can't wait to get to work with them next year. The Flames finish the season 10-16 and will look to get stronger and more experienced next season. The Flames lose Manu Rubawa and Bryce Sharp, who are seniors, but return all the other players, including the starters, from this past season. When we come back, we talk to Coach Tommy Brown about that recruiting process and what he's looking to do. And we also talk to Coach Marty Rowe about postseason play in the NCCAA. I'm Ken Jones, inviting you to visit the all-new SpeakingDeacon.com where you'll find everything you're looking for. Browse over 1,000 vehicles, including 12 new car brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. Apply for financing, get a value for your trade-in, schedule a service appointment, download monthly service coupons, and find the Deacon Jones store nearest you. It's all right here at SpeakingDeacon.com. Speaking Deacon, Speaking Deacon. Are you Speaking Deacon? Welcome back to Inside the University Basketball. Joining me now is Flames head coach Tommy Brown. We're going to talk about the way the season wrapped up and what's going on now. Coach, you know, probably not the year you expected or you wanted, but what did we learn from our first season in the Gulf South Conference? Well, we learned there's a lot of good players and a lot of good coaches, and it's, um, it was definitely a step up. Talent-wise, it was a challenge, it was a grind, it was mentally exhausting, and uh, so, um, yeah, it was difficult. And we competed like crazy. We were probably at a talent disadvantage 
on most nights and you know I just couldn't come up with a way for us to get over the hump and win a lot of those close games and and so uh, I'm proud of my guys they had a great attitude all year they practiced well all year and um, so uh, you know certainly I don't blame them I put the you know responsibility on me we just couldn't get it done in the late stretches of uh, many of those games. Well, Coach, you had a very young team coming into this season. How much did that play in a factor, and how are those players as the season progressed towards the end? Well, they, they got better. Uh, we played, uh, for example, against West Georgia, 93 of the 200 minutes were played by freshmen. Mm -hmm. uh, so that bodes well for the future. Um, uh, we actually played five, uh, played significant minutes. Uh, three started at times. So, uh, you know, certainly they got better as the year went on, uh, but it was very difficult for 18-year-olds to compete against uh, the older guys in our league. We have a ton of transfers in this league, mm -hmm. a lot of older guys. And so, um, I mean, you can tell there's a big difference between an 18-year-old and a 22, 23-year-old. You know, late in the season, the team started progressing and playing better in longer stretches and culminating with the game against Shorter, where your guys really stepped up. And you had a lot of freshmen in that game, Jamal Worthington, Bryce Copeland, step up and, and play big minutes and get big points for you. Uh, we did, and uh, Bryce Copeland uh, stepped up at the end of the year, played the last five games, played incredibly well. Uh, obviously, we probably should have got him in earlier, got him more minutes earlier. And uh, looking back on that, you know, that was a mistake. But uh, proud of our freshmen, how they grew up. They're also good people. And they're good students. They've done well in the classroom. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll have good careers. So where do you go from here as far as the recruiting trail? Do you hit that trail immediately? And then, uh, what are you looking for? Well, you're always – recruiting never stops. They say it's kind of like shaving, which you and I haven't done much <laughs> of. But, uh, you know, you take a day off, then you're in trouble and it shows. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a 365 day deal, and um, you know we'll we're on the road right now. We're going to be on the road quite a bit in the month of March, and uh, we uh, have um, we're losing two seniors, and we've actually already signed two really good kids early. We're excited about what they're going to be, and uh, both uh, one from Oak Ridge and one from Meigs County, both are probably going to play in the state tournament. So we're excited about that. But uh, you know, certainly we need to add some size. We need to get more athletic, and, um, and our guys need to get bigger and stronger in the offseason that we have here. All right. Thanks, Coach. I really appreciate you taking time to come speak to us here at Inside League Basketball. Good luck next year. Good luck on the recruiting trail, and we'll see you next season. Thank you, Jeffrey. Appreciate we'll be it. right back with Coach Marty Rowe as he talks about their postseason plans. Back. I'm joined now with Coach Marty Rowe, head coach of the Lady Flames. Coach, what a great way to end the regular season with a win over a rival shorter and also to claim uh, the Gulf South regular season title. I, that has to feel good for your team coming into the Gulf South for the first year. Well, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a great accomplishment for our team to go 18-2 and two in league play and you know win 15 straight games mm -hmm. uh, in, in the league. Uh, it's in, especially since it's a good league. I mean, uh, you have a lot of really quality teams and you know, ranked teams and then Union, of course. And uh, so it's a great accomplishment for our teams that finished in first place. Uh, you know, Gulf South won't let us claim that regular season title, but, uh, uh, you know, certainly here at, here at our university, uh, we can be very, very proud of, of the accomplishments uh, that this team made first year in the league. Yeah, I'm not sure the Gulf South expected this kind of showing from the Lee team, the Lee Lady Flames, but we knew what we were capable of coming into the season. Well, we were hopeful. I mean, we thought we could compete, and we thought we could compete at a high level. We've done that for a long time, and 
um, and it was it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was obviously a, a tremendous grind, you know, being on the road, traveling as much as we did. But uh, you know, we got tougher as the year went on, obviously, and and we took a lot of you know some hard knocks. We were seven and four at one time, mm-hmm. and you know, end up the year twenty two and four on this fifteen game winning streak. So uh, very rewarding. Uh, I think we knew we had a uh, a team that uh, was very very quality, and 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 obviously our play, players. Uh, uh, prove that this year. So the Gulf South won't allow Lee, Union, or Shorter to compete in the conference tournament that happens this week because of provisional status, but coach, you're going to take uh, the Lady Flames to a different tournament. Right. We're going to leave uh, we're, uh, uh, March 14th and 15th. We're going to play in the NCC uh, AA, which is the National Christian College Athletic Association. We're going to play in a regional tournament. It's at Union. We're the one seed in the Mideast region. Uh, Union's the two seed. Uh, Bluefield College and Tennessee Temple will be there. And we'll play Tennessee Temple in the 1-4 game, uh, followed by Union and uh, – or uh, after Union and uh, Bluefield playing a 2-3 game. Uh, the winner of that region goes to the national tournament uh, the next week in Winona Lake, Indiana. And, uh, and then there are a couple at-large bids. So right now we're ranked number one in the mm-hmm. NCCAA. So, you know, uh, depending – obviously we want to win that regional. Uh, there's not a chance that we don't want to go down there and try to win. Uh, but we probably already have secured ourselves a bid in the national tournament as well. So our players are looking forward to it. Postseason is postseason. With the NCCAA this year, you have Azusa Pacific, mm-hmm. Point Loma, Southern Nazarene, Oklahoma Christian, uh, a lot of the Union, of course, uh, a lot of quality former NEI teams that we've seen in the national tournament that are in this uh, transition period in the NCAA, so it's going to be a great tournament. Yeah, a lot of the teams you mentioned there are perennials in the NAI national tournament, and actually a lot of teams that we've faced yeah. over the last several years in that tournament. Coach, uh, congratulations on the regular season finishing up. We're going to look forward. We're going to have a final show, a postseason show, after the NCCAA national tournament from, from Lake Winona, Indiana, and we'll talk about how the Lady Flames do in both the regionals and the national tournament. Coach, I appreciate you coming by. Have a good season, rest of the season, postseason. Good luck. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. All right, we'll be right back with more Inside the University Basketball. Fazoli's is the most family-friendly Italian restaurant in town. All the fresh and flavorful meals are served right at your table on real dishes with real silverware instead of foam or plastic. Enjoy a clean, contemporary dining room and the excellent service you would normally expect from an expensive sit-down restaurant. For less than the price of a burger and fries, you can get a delicious hot meal like baked spaghetti, pizza, and all the breadsticks you can eat. It's fast, fresh Italian. It's Fazoli's. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. I'm Ken Jones, inviting you to visit the all-new SpeakingDeacon.com, where you'll find everything you're looking for. Browse over 1,000 vehicles, including 12 new car brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. Apply for financing, get a value for your trade-in, schedule a service appointment, download monthly service coupons, and find the Deacon Jones store nearest you. It's all right here at SpeakingDeacon.com. Speaking Deacon, Speaking Deacon. Are you Speaking Deacon? Well, that's it for this week's show. Our next show will be the Lady Flames Tournament Special that will air March 26th, following the NCCAA National Tournament. We'll bring you all the highlights from the regional and national tournaments. Until then, follow us on Twitter for updates throughout the tournament at Inside Lee V-Ball. Thanks for joining us this year, and we'll see you in a few weeks for the tournament special. For coaches Tommy Brown, Marty Rowe, and Emily Pitcher, I'm Jeff Salyer. See you next time.